that is called Bug Brain and Bumpkins. It's a 44 minute video. Holy moly. Okay, we'll watch it. This video is sponsored by this plate. Uh, yep. Scareboard, AK40 opening event. So, uh, one of the more hardcore goals we have for vanilla is we want to have the most, the most scareboards in the world. I'm gonna be honest, anyone that has Scarab Lord is a slave. Is a slave driver. Or gold buyer, yeah, or gold buyer. It's like, hey, do you wanna have good loot in next? Get me all the Scarabs. I got to kill. <gasps> oh, it was just a dream. Of course, that was that was months ago. What day is it? 2021. 2021. Well, you know what they say: another year, another video. <laughs> I feel like I'm forever apologizing for taking so long to make content, but um, I play World of Warcraft Classic for the PC. I don't get to have free time. What you thought making content was my job, and I should prioritize that? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, me too. Uh, then I realized to make good WoW content, you have to go. Wait, oh. he uploads once a year? That's nuts. All in. <laughs> of course I am, Marzan. Uh, keep it in the video. <laughs> I don't care. I've lost my fucking mind at this point. Do you know how long I spend farming consumes just so I can efficiently raid log uh, to edit, right? To, uh, I raid log uh, to edit, right? Wrong. To level several raiding alts so I can be as useful as possible in the Burning Crusade that we don't even know is coming out yet, by the way. You see, to secure the content of the future, I have to grind in the now. And I'm not going to get Glaives of Azanoth just by virtue of playing a rogue and being a content creator. My guild operates on a very strict merit-based system and honestly, Honestly, I wouldn't have it any other way because it feels good to earn thing in video game. Crazy concept, I know. Ironic, is it not playing World of Warcraft has become my true job and making content is just How what is I do for fun in my every free day time. He's Being still a content creator truly really is a joke. He's lying. Uh, a monkey's <laughs> poor wish. You think you want it, but you don't. Speaking of How having no free time, do you know what Slayer? I did on Christmas Day? <laughs> Killed how many bugs? It's been like what, 16 hours, one day, and four rounds. Is this serious? He's actually trying to just this pathetic. Is it you're gonna have? And why are you ignoring it by hurting this? No one wants to hear about Nick. Welcome to patch 1.12. Nax is out. I got a ring in there last night. Wait, Nax is out? Nax out? Nax is out? Nax out? Nax is out? Yes, Nax is out. If you got the rep to get in. Naturally, I'm exalted. My 72 runs of strat home to get Shadowcraft pants speak for themselves. Wish I could tell you that was my worst item grind, but. I suffered through 206 full upper Blackrock Spire runs before I even saw a Shadowcraft chest drop. A fate that is Dude, statistically you might actually play improbable, more wild than but you, I Pike. have the proof and, well, unlikelier things have happened. In upper Blackrock Spire, the sexual tension between Rend and Nefarian is awkward, and the loot you need seems to never drop. What could be worse? Oh, right. Blizzard introducing spell upgrade books in this patch that only drop from here. I have to go back. Why? With this patch, we also received an array of new quests, Wait, I don't which know is if just I have classic that on my main for road. elaborate vendoring. See, these quests aren't actually real. This is just tier piece vendoring before Blizzard figured out how to code this. However, these quests outside have something very, very important that we're going to need the Argent Dawn Tabard. Sorry, I mean Consecrated Sharpening Stones. But I am gonna pick up that Tabard too, because it's fucking this. Consecrated Sharpening Stones give plus 100 attack power against undead for one hour, making instant poison pretty much obsolete in Naxxramas except on the Fair Lena and Myxna fights, because they're not undead. By the way, rogues, on Myxna you can vanish the web spray, so go, go get that 99. Because they're so strong in Naxxramas, I'm going to want a lot of these Sharpening Stones, uh, about three per week until Classic ends, so I don't know, let's call that like six months tops, that's like seven two stones, but then I also need to factor in I'm gonna want these stones in Burning Crusade for some bosses that we don't even know is coming out yet, by the way. I'll be clearing those bosses once per week every week since they come out until the end of TBC's life cycle, so that's a lot of stones. But one single consecrated sharpening stone costs eight necrotic runes, and there's only one place to get necrotic runes. Everyone needs them, everyone's grinding for them, and they're only around for a limited time because, of course, they yeah, are I'm welcome to yet another virtual hell resource war Transition curated and designed by Blizzard Entertainment. 
Welcome to, to the grind. But it's not the grind people yeah, want to like see. Yeah, I don't like this melting thing. Around the bug. Keeps you <laughs> 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 through 300 hours of footage. Multiple times, by the way. You gotta edit that. You gotta do it now. No 600! Oh my god! They don't want to hear about this plate, which is uh, this video sponsor. They do look good on my wall. Every couple of hours, a random nice. invasion will begin somewhere on that. Azeroth, signified by a purple skull on the map and giant floating ziggurats appearing in the sky somewhere within that zone. If you follow one of the necrotic bolts fired from the ziggurat, you will uncover a horde of ghosts and ghouls protecting a necrotic shard. These mobs can drop single necrotic runes, but the real reason we're here to kill them is to weaken the shard, because once you weaken the shard enough, four dudes will teleport down from the ziggurat and attempt to repair it. Using eight necrotic runes, you can curse one of these dudes and turn him into an elite shadow of doom. These dudes fucking slap, by the way. But this is what you came here for, because these elites drop a guaranteed 30 necrotic runes. Now, I could have busted my balls for days, maybe even weeks, fighting against players of both factions for some necrotic runes, but when I heard my friend only got 34 necrotic runes in one day due to the sheer congestion and griefing, I had flashbacks to- Barney, you get it? That's your time. Nope, I'm fucking dead. Haha. -ha. Something. And was like, yeah, fuck that. There's got to be a better way. At first, I thought that better way would be to just farm at 4.11 a.m. on a weekday. But it turns out, even if you are lucky enough to get a shard to yourself, which I cannot stress to you enough just how rare that is, you still need a group to help you. A group that is also going to need necrotic runes, and a group that is also probably going to be of a suboptimal setup because it's 4.11 a.m. on a weekday. Oh, yeah, it took us good. about one hour to clear this shard, and I walked away with 124 necrotic runes. That converts to only 15 sharpening stones, and it will now be three hours before be the another next invasion part of the starts. Lord. By then, or all the dads will be that. awake, so uh, this is likely as good as it gets. There has to be a better way. Now, that better way wasn't death rolling this warrior for his last seven gold, which he needed to spend on repairs, but I did it anyway. No, the better way was in fact something so obvious I was surprised I didn't think of it sooner. All I actually had to do was just wait. One whole month, to be exact, until Christmas Day 2020, when everyone else was off Offline spending potentially life-threatening quality time with their loved ones, Red Spawn and I came in and cleaned house. I hate this editing, the this this morphing thing. I like his videos, but I don't like that edit he did. <laughs> and that's how I farm 200 carapace fragments. I mean, sharpening stone. Wait, what the fuck? What's wrong with my inventory? Wait, this isn't a shara. Where the fuck am I? What's going on? Ah, fuck. Ow. Ow. You alright? No, I just fell asleep. <laughs> I hit my head on my mic. <laughs> oh my god, it's only dick. What's that? Nax Ramus? Necrotic runes? What the fuck are you talking about? We're here farming bugs. Like, you have no idea what's going on, do you? I'm gonna catch you up to speed. After Baristolf's permanent resurrection at the hands of the No Changes team, the Horde and the Alliance began warring for the most <laughs> the precious no resource of all, territory. After all, he who owns the territory owns the farm within it. Are you picking up what I'm putting down, yeah. son? As the hours passed and the many battles waged on, the territory balance shifted like so. Somewhere along the way, guilds of all sizes and creeds began to put aside their super serious dramas to band together under one banner for the Horde. This was, at least for now, not just this. a guild versus guild affair, saw, but rather actually. an all-out faction war, and childish infighting was going to have to be put on hold if we were going to get some farm. And so, a natural ecosystem settled in. Above ground, PvP teams would patrol to keep the Alliance out, allowing the farmers below ground to safely acquire fragments. As someone who spent quite a few hours of this time doing- This is like doing... ants and like bumblebees fighting for their hive. Both. I can attest to you personally that during these hours, it truly felt like I was fighting alongside the Horde as a faction. It really felt like I was like actually a guy in the Horde, like fighting in a, in a real war. <laughs> Sounds so lame, but it was so fucking cool. I might not be very good at world PvP, but I sure as heck like to participate anyway. Just don't let me catch you alone in Stormwind. <laughs> God, I fucking love being a Ow! This system of holding Holy mass territory as a faction had proven to be quite successful, and after a while, the large-scale fights seemed to die down. The Horde, whilst very condensely packed, had their territory in Hive Zora, and the Alliance, whilst not exactly working together as one unit, had their territories in Hive Ashy and Hive Regal. As a full moon rose and the evening settled in, a calm finally swept across Silithus, and for just a brief moment, there was no fighting, there was no drama, no bad vibes, it was just... Guys being dudes hanging out, killing some fucking bugs. And then he appeared. Yeah. The one who would put this tenuous horde pack to the test. Cloaked in a mantle of feathers, brandishing a mallet, scorched by the sun itself, he descended from the cosmic realms. The Sage of the Six Moons. 
His teachings rang out in the general chat, imparting a most forbidden technique to all druids. A highly illegal Moonfire scroll wheel macro that can tag mobs on frame one. I'm pretty sure people actually got banned for using this, by the way. With this, the druids would have power to completely disrupt the emergent ebb and flow of Hive Zora. Why be cordial with your fellow faction member and let him have that farm when he literally cannot stop you from tagging it before him? But true balanced druids they were not, and what had taken the horde hours to build up in mere minutes was destroyed forever. So now we had a bunch of druids running rampant below ground, tagging literally every mob on spawn and pissing everybody off. Oh no! It also didn't help that the druids responsible for this just so happened to be in guilds who had already gained a reputation over the course of the day for farming in the hives whilst not having proper PvP representation outside, essentially freeloading. And let me tell you, when you're on your 17th consecutive hour of PvPing the Alliance to keep people safe who oh, are in return just stomping so all over bad. your goodwill, you start to realize that the enemy might not necessarily have a red name. The enemy might actually actually just be certain guilds within your own faction, for what is an enemy if not someone going out of their way to hinder your goals. This realization came to be known as the People's Grief Awakening. Countless memes on the Grubulous subreddit began circulating at this time, disparaging the rat way of life whilst praising those who had previously struck a fair balance between fighting and farming. Ah! These memes, whilst very funny, <laughs> world of rat. Rat. Unfortunately, did very little to dissuade the druids from their path. No, you can't just steal our tags by using an instant target and cast macro. Uh -huh. Scroll will go. And at this point, most people had realized the grim reality that even if the druids were to stop, it was too little too late. The damage was done. Bad blood was already boiling, reputations had begun to form, and the once proud horde pact was slowly falling apart. <laughs> also, they were like oh, defending God. the area so that the horde could safely farm it, but then the druids were like stealing everything. To plan. I didn't just spend the last 17 hours merely PvPing and killing bugs, no. I was also sneaking around with my rogue crew, keeping tabs on everything and That's everyone. I mean, it's literally my job to document this event, right? So by extension, I need to know which guilds are where, their rough numbers, their PvP prowess, their allegiances, their enemies, everything. And as the battles waged on and I harvested this data in secrecy, I started to realize something. The trick to the Alliance's strength, the reason they were able to hold twice as much territory as us. It was just a numbers game. A numbers game with a huge flaw. You see, the Alliance didn't have bigger guilds or better guilds, they just had more guilds. But if these guilds were to start distrusting each other, if those guilds were to stop working together, well, that would be most favorable to Final Boss, a guild no other guild can possibly stand alone against. So I admit it. It was me that summoned the Sage of the Six Moons. Why did I do it? Because after years of baiting a rise out of public server admins on GTA 5 and Gary's mod, I'm sort of like the deprived mind whisperer. Yeah, cause you're a fucking low IQ nut, fucking numb nuts. Talking to you is like talking to a fucking brick wall. You're in my <laughs> ear invading my brain and lowering my IQ. Why don't you shut the fuck up for a change and actually use your lukewarm IQ to Luke realize Warm. what you've done here and how you are fucking failed. And I know druid players to be the most deprived minds of all. They try to heal only to be out healed by everyone else. They try to tank only to be told they're trolling and to re-roll warrior. They try to melee DPS only to be told they're trolling and to re-roll warrior. And God can only help you if you're trying to play a boomkin. Re-roll warrior? Inside the mind of every druid is a complacent, beaten down, pathetic loser who only knows how to take orders. To be a druid <laughs> is to be a jack of all trades and a master of none. And when you're a master of none, you should probably just reroll warrior. So, when a druid is finally offered not only a way to be useful, but a way to unquestionably become the dominant class in a scenario, I knew they simply wouldn't be able to resist. I orchestrated the great druid uprising, and I did it to sow chaos. Sure, the horde pact was dismantled in the process, but more importantly, so was the alliances. And that was the plan all along. Quick fact check. The alliance have more territory. The alliance have more guilds. The alliance have more numbers the Alliance have more druids. I can only imagine the levels of griefing the Alliance were suffering through these hours. <laughs> now was the perfect time to strike, and Hive Regal, coveted for its higher drop rates, was our prime target. Everyone that can hear my voice is abandoning their current position, and you will move at that time. Everybody will group up at 3780. Is this for a regal push? Yes. I think it's time we let these fucking rats drown. Leaving Hive Zora completely open to attack from the north, my guild consolidated their numbers at a secret location alongside every other true and noble guild left. We were going to hit the now weakened alliance with the full force of the rat-free horde.
For the last 24 hours, Silithus had been the stage to many large and small-scale PvP skirmishes, but nothing would compare to the raid on Hive Regal. I miss WoP be like this. This is, this is pretty fun. Unless you're the team that's getting wiped. The raid on Hyperdoll had been a complete success. Such a success, in fact, that for the next 24 hours, nothing else of note happened. Or maybe it did. I wouldn't know. I was in this room the whole time farming, farming bugs. bugs. My only contact with the outside world during these hours was through general chat, but because humans aren't designed to sit in front of a screen for 58 hours at a time killing virtual bugs for clout in a 15-year-old video game, general chat was even more general chat than usual. The populace in their delirium were all suffering oh, from a mass snakes. hallucination known only as Snake Min, a deity-like figure who doesn't seem to have any certain law or single point of origin that I could place. He exists only in the delirious scrawlings of those who have contracted bug brain, a condition that befalls all those who enter Silithus with the intent of farming fragments. You'll know you have bug brain when you start <sighs> seeing 200. carapace fragments where you shouldn't be But you be just need 200, them. chat? That's all you need? You start hearing bugs, the clicking of their mandibles, the howl of the wind as it rolls through the caves. And I hate this. <laughs> the... What is this editing card? <laughs> he never used this, but he keeps using it. You, yeah. you, you need 440 k. Okay, that's a lot. I'm severely sleep deprived. And you see him, Snake Min. He is a reflection of you. His values are your values, and and that's comforting. Praise him. Praise Farm him. Bugs. Praise, Praise him. him. Farm Praise him. bugs. However, after deciphering several general chat messages, it seems that during these down, hours, Hive Zora went on to become on a volatile that, rat kingdom with no consistent to get faction balance. Pretty much no man's land. If you were a small guild attempting a scarab lord or just a business person trying to sell bug killing services, Hive Zora was you probably he, like, your best bet. As for Hive Ashy, well, that's Alliance territory, and that's Maybe all the data did I have. Do it on accident. I was killing bugs. Because sometimes when you render it out, and it's supposed to be like a clean transition. It does this sometimes. Maybe it bugged out and he uploaded it. In fact, we were able to farm for so long uninterrupted in Hybrigal during these hours that we fully farmed not one, but two Scarab Lords worth of reputation, which looking back at it now was the peak of our farming efficiency. I don't know if it was because people hadn't burned out yet, or the fact that we had uncontested free farm for 24 hours, or the fact that we just had so many people, but we were harvesting fragments at an unbelievable pace. It was during these hours that I also managed to complete my personal task of gaining 200 fragments solo, just to see how long hypothetically it would take for me to farm Scarab Lord myself and so just before i went to bed for the first time in three days by the way i went to hand them in but before that Displate. Metallic posters for your walls. With over 1.4 million designs ranging from gaming, anime, movies, to nature, you're bound to find something you like in a size that suits the space you have to work with. It turns out a lot I of artists I follow one, on but Twitter I want have stores one. on Displate, which made my selection rather easy. How could I not go for Dreamwalker's incredible Warcraft vistas or his beautiful pastel wave cityscapes by Allura? Installation takes literally 20 seconds. You just stick it to the wall with magnets. It's so easy a paladin. <sighs> Player could do it. Warning, browsing this website will absolutely make you want to purchase displate, so make sure you're either a content creator capable of using your clout to decorate your apartment for free, or using my discount link in the description, one, which if I don't you want use, get will get one. you 30% off your- Yeah, if you, is it cool to get one, or is it like lame to get one? Like when you walk in someone's room and he has a lot of posters, like, is he a loser or a cool person? First two displates, or 37% off if you get three or more. Soda has a bunch. Soda's uh He's a loser. Ow! I'm currently <laughs> smelting my thorium that I have been getting from rich thorium veins that I have been sneaking from other people. Yo, Barney, fuck off. <laughs> I got prep uh, too. I gotta get those arcane crystals. Um, and I'm about to go to bed. Uh I've been awake for too long. But before oh, I go to bed, I'm gonna hand true. in these 200 fragments. Probably, probably my only 200 fragments. I've actually farmed like 800 fragments, but I've I only kept like one in four. Reminder to progress past this part, I would have to <clears throat> hand in enough fragments to fill this bar, and then two more. Handing in these fragments will give me 200 rep. What? That was. 
I'm going to bed. And go to bed oh I did. Oh my god. Wherein I caught a delicious six hours of sleep before. More work. Now, of course, some of you might be thinking, oh, wait, I you're still that. farming bugs? I but hate that. Why? Why? You've pretty much seen for yourself that Scarab Lord isn't going to happen. Why Why are you still torturing yourself? Me of rank to that, I say, drive. I made a promise. A promise I intend to keep that I would live up to the mantle of the like best forward content creator and good. make something truly epic on this event. And do you really think that this is a good ending right here, right now? I didn't think so. We still have Scarab Lords to farm. We still have quests to help with. And I'll be damned if the last three days were for nothing. I don't go back on my word. I promised you the there good was a content, week chat? and I'm gonna fucking deliver. Cause that's my ninja way. And so that's why I, after only six hours of sleep, reawoke and logged right back onto World of Warcraft. However, this was not the Silithus I had left behind. In my absence, the largest alliance guild, Goof, whom we pushed out of Hive Regal some 30 that's hours ago, had banner. reclaimed the entire West Hive this in a similar a fashion RP raid, server. leaving final boss with the South Hive and the surface surrounding. And as you probably already guessed, the East Hive fell to the rats. God damn fucking rat. Goof, knowing that it would probably take the entirety of Final Boss to clear them out, had in this moment made a very clever play. We can't go and fight them because that would leave our hive open to the rats. They can't come and fight us because that would leave their hive open to the rats. Ah, so we have a stalemate, right? <laughs> No. Unfortunately, all the people with PvP sense were at this time asleep. And so those that were left decided, fuck it, let's just fight anyway. Remember how I said both hives would be left open to the rats if this occurred? Well, that's exactly what fucking happened. Wow, I can't believe it. Luckily, some strategic masterminds were able to log in before me and negotiate a ceasefire. And I guess part of that ceasefire agreement was that our best PvP rogue Kim Possible would be taken hostage by the enemy. This is literally what I logged in to see. Roleplay? From the two sweatiest guilds on the server? Huh? This is how you know bug brain is a real thing. Hours passed and it was clear that the easy free farming of yore was over. The war between Goof and Final Boss had definitely been a huge blunder for both sides. Alas, this was the new reality. A reality of slow farm and rats. So many rats, so many bugs, so many rats. And if things couldn't get worse, I then heard that one noise no one wants to hear in World of Warcraft. There was an enemy rogue in the cave. So now I had to worry about this fucking rat called, literally, literally called rat bag in front of me stealing my tags. And I also had to be worried about the unknown assassin who was definitely going to jump me at low health for that easy honor kill. But then there came so many occasions over the next hour where I was definitely low enough to just be a free kill, but I didn't get killed. The scenario made no sense. The rogue was still here. I just saw him. But he wasn't doing anything. This puzzle weighed heavily on my mental, so much so that I ended up losing my first tag to Ratbag in about an hour. Or did I? Your eyes do not deceive you. The gnome rogue ran straight through me to get to Ratbag, uh, the only person not in final boss in this cave, by the way, and uh, unalived him. And I mean, am I gonna really get involved? This is, uh, this is a pretty good scenario for me. But hold on a second. I know that name. That rogue is in Goof. What the fuck is going on? On. Did they hire? So here's what the fuck was going on. The reason Goof wanted to take Kim Possible, the best PvP rogue we have to offer hostage, oh. was because they could then put Kim Possible to work in their hives, killing their rats. I love this game. And Kim had done such a fucking good job, as is to be expected, that they felt obligated to return the favor by sending rogues into our hives to clear out our rats. But now that I knew what was oh, going wow. on, I wasn't going to let Kim have all the fun. I tailed Romrek back to the deepest recesses of the Goof hive and scanned for any target not wearing the Goof Troop guild tag. Rat located. I then waited for His to guild name rat is Rat Casino, dude. Stuff where I intervened and did rogue stuff. And of course, Goof let me kill them with no retaliation. Too. So I did what I do best and kept them till they logged off. The Rat Exterminator exchange program had formed. I and others would periodically cruise through Goof Hive to make sure it was nice and goof and unalive any non-goofers that were found. And on the flip side, whenever it was obvious a rat was overstaying their welcome in the final boss hive, I would walk into the Goof Hive and beckon someone to come my way. They would then follow me back to the final boss hive and camp every rat until they either spirit revived or in the case of this warlock, Frywood logged off. I do have to give Frywood props though out Kinda of every- feels bad though, no? Like, if you didn't have a big guild in this scenario, you would not be able to get Scarab Lord, right? Like, you would- you would, There was a lot of collusion. I know, um, 
our server had that too. Rat across this entire event, they were the most persistent and the most annoying to deal with. They had me on ignore since the moment they showed up here, and they griefed my tags for like a week straight. Almost like they were trying to get in the video or something, so fuck you, I'm not showing any of it. As the days flew by and we ticked off more and more Scarab Lords, it seemed we had finally created the perfect farming ecosystem. We had the South Hive, Goof had the West Hive, we shared the surface, and rats were heavily deterred from disrupting this, knowing exactly who would be waiting on the other end to camp them. And in hindsight, it seemed so obvious. We should have just been doing this from the start. After all, Final Boss and Goof have the same goal. We both just want to get as many Scarab Lords as possible. And we're both the largest, most tryhard guilds of our- What is that banner, dude? This is literally a RP server, man. Final boobs? What is this? Oh, <laughs> Final boobas. We both just want to get as many Scarab Lords as possible. And we're both the largest, most tryhard guilds of our respective factions. Yeah, this, don't feed into this only the boobas, just makes okay. sense. But this allegiance would never have formed if not for a stupid bit of roleplay at like 4am. And this is why I will never not play on roleplay servers. This just wouldn't have happened. A silly little roleplay wherein they took our best PvP a hostage. This, this happened in every server. I know like Stacey Guild, Espen Guild, they would have... I don't know if particularly they did, but guilds would have some hordes come and clear out these alliance so they could farm in peace, and then this alliance group clears out that horde guild so this horde guild could like they t they like had an allegiance with each other. Started there was a events lot of that those. would soon turn into the greatest farming efficiency. And it was lame because if you had a small guild, like even if you wanted to farm, they were like literally grouping up against you until you left. So it, it was kind of toxic in a way. Had I know there's a lot of drama because of, of this. Sure, we weren't farming as many fragments I know every per guild hour, had but big they were drama. safe, easy, rat-free fragments farmed alongside gamers who were striving yeah, for the same goal that. as you. Absurd numbers of Scarab Lords. What we lost in fragments per hour, we made up in morale and team spirit. And honestly, I really believe that if it wasn't for Goof, people in Final Boss probably would have burned out way sooner. But of course, Hyvregal is a secluded corner of Silithus. What happens in Hyvregal stays in Hyvregal. And so for those looking in, they didn't see the events that led up to the this allegiance. They didn't see oh, the war. Like they didn't see the roleplay. They didn't see That's this right. collaborative effort as something to praise. All they saw was collusion. Cross faction collusion evidence collection thread. The rats were pissed. Hello all. The past few days I've been collecting and editing down evidence to send to Blizzard regarding this recent final boss slash mastermind <gasps> slash goof troop collusion. Now with Obsidian Council it looks like. Feel free to add any evidence to the collection. I'm still going through video and I reckon the more evidence slash emails the this. better. You this can't... just ends up making the game worse so hopefully we can do something to push back against it. And attached to the thread was just a bunch of clips slash screenshots of random rats just getting owned and being surprised they could <laughs> walk in as a solo player and just free farm in Hive Regal. <laughs> Suffice to say, we didn't get banned, shockingly, yeah, but it, it just goes to show how badly Bug Brain was affecting some players. For them, it was tough to see that the fact of the matter was Final Boss and Goof had just realized fighting each other at this point was a waste of time, He's and the best course of action to achieve the goal of brain. farming as many Scarab Lords as possible was to just keep each other happy. This was a destined fate, it could have gone no other way, and the proof of this is that this Horde X Alliance large guild team-up was being mirrored across plenty of other servers. More importantly, however, this was also being mirrored in the fucking lore taking place in this event right now. The Horde and the Alliance are canonically teaming up to storm and Courage. D did you miss that? This is peak World of Warcraft. But as the bug brain virus spread, oh, the collusion statements five. began to increase in ridiculousness. For example, collusion on an RP server should be grounds for immediate removal. Which is just, bro, you're playing on an Thank RP you, server. How do you think this occurs, if not for collusion between factions? Lol. Was me that. not killing Kuma? in collusion? Hi, welcome to Did You Know, Idiot. The Horde and the Alliance learning to put aside their differences to work together for a common goal has only been like the main plot point for like every single fucking no, round no, no, since, I don't know, like yeah, even existed. Oh, together, united against the shadow, will you be able to save this world from the flame? You and I stood side by side. This is what I say all the time, chat. Alliance and Horde, they always team up. I don't know how we're still enemies. Warcraft 3, Remember when we all teamed up, the orc fought first. Was it the orc? Human orc and then night of... I don't know. There was an order where like undeads were coming and you had to fight against them. I don't know how we always end up being bad people. This video is so long. Holy shit though. I, I like the video. It's like a progress video. On the slopes of Mount Hyjal. But it is long. Yeah. That world tree did not fall. 
Because the Horde and the Alliance worked together. Cross-faction collusion. Consider yourself reported, you dirty colluders. Now I am cherry-picking. I don't think Blizzard doesn't do anything for collusion. Also, I don't know how to say it. I think collusion, like, ruins the game in a way. Because right now, um, in our server at least, the streamer server, Feralina, like, this stuff is kind of lame because there's a DMT buff, right? And then this is the stairway up and then the dungeon's here, right? So this warlock summons you. And then you go in to get your buff. But here, there's a group of alliance. A lot of people. I think sometimes there's vampire clan. These guys get paid by this undead warlock. These guys are alliance. You get summoned here. And basically, if you don't pay this guy, you can't go get the buff because there's so many alliance here, correct? Especially DMT week, which is the Dark Moon Fair buff week. Um, so if you want to just come in here, these guys are going to kill you. But if you pay him, he escorts you. So this is you. This is the Warlock. You go up together. Hey, this guy's my friend. Don't touch him. He escorts me in. Bam, we pass, right? And then the, 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 the normal people, they just get attacked by it. It's, it's kind of unfair. You know what I mean? It's like a 15-year-old mafia, exactly, the 15-year-old mafia. So like, this right here, imagine it was your dream to get Scarab Lord, and you're trying to farm, and then this guild like comes and shits on you until you log out. But then they don't hit any other horde, that's kind of unfair, no? I, that's my point of view. I know like, I don't know, I'm not a big fan of the Scarab Lord people. They're like slave drivers. Everyone that farms for them are like victims. They don't get the Scarab Lord, they're GM, and the other people that I know in the guild gets it. And then the guild leader is like, I'll give you better loot if you farm for me. You know what I mean? It's, it's effed up, dude. I didn't like it. Uh, it is worth noting that these rats were definitely in the minority of people, but they were- that, That's why I was one of the people killing like all the Alliance as a horde. Whoever did the collusion, I would go kill them all with Guzu. Yo, Pringle, thank you for the five. Oh, pretty, dude, you guys are going ham with the gifted. Thank you so much, Chad. Thank you, thank you. Very, very fucking loud minority. So loud, in fact, that sitting President Donald Trump was forced to make a statement to combat the fake news regarding the collusion. Someone commissioned this and put it in my guild Discord. I had to use it. This yeah, is for I'm a collusion the WoW Classic server. <laughs> Grab your list. Grab your list, okay? <laughs> you need to know that the Goop Troop, Goop Troop, did not collude with the final boss. There was zero collusion. They are innocent, okay? Everything being said is fake news, fake <laughs> news. All charges <laughs> dropped. Did you hear that? All charges dropped. With a full pardon from the President of the United States, Goof and Final Boss continued to work together New towards securing scene. Grobulus's legacy. Together, we were going to find Chad, do you, many think he get, do you think Varney gets the buff? Yes or no? What do you think? He was kind of low on the list. I hope he gets it, but we'll see. What do you think, Chad? You think he gets it or no? No, yes, no, definitely does not. I don't say it if you already saw the video. We haven't seen. I already know. Yes, I know you know Pint. Pint loves Barney. Nope. Tactics of streamer too, Poggers. Okay, let's see. Let's find out. Scarab Lords as possible before the gates would open. But time was running out. As guilds began finishing up their bug farming and moving on to the next part of this cursed quest. Don't ruin his moment, you idiot. <laughs> they would naturally turn their focus towards completing the war effort. After all, they want to go and open Ankaraj and raid it. It's like the whole point of this event. At this point in the timeline, it's August 8th, 2020. A very special date. There is currently only one scepter bearer, Typo. But that's all about to change. For if I were to jump forward one day, four other people obtained their scepters overnight. I was there, and it was quite something, but we'll get to that later. Because that's not why August 8th was special, no. For that, we need to turn our attention to the war effort data between August 8th and August 9th. August 8th and August 9th. Did you see it? That's an awful lot of peace bloom handed in on the Horde side, don't you think? 25,380 peace bloom to be exact. Well, that's because August 8th was a very special day. The day of the peace bloom DKP.
Dawnbreaker Peace Bloom DKP. Dawnbreaker invites all Grobulans to its first Molten Core PDKP. Buy gear with Peace Bloom. Wow. Wow. Time. Discord. See you soon, Farm Peace Bloom. Thanks, Heavy Hoof. I will. <laughs> and I did, because this post was made like a week before now, and when you're sitting in a cave farming bugs for days on end, there's a lot of downtime. A lot of downtime to alt tab onto your secret <laughs> alt no one knows about and pick Peace Bloom completely anonymously in Duratar. Jesse does a lot every of day. Peace Bloom. But the real flowers were the friends I made along the way. Now, you might be wondering, wait, don't you want to prevent the war effort from being completed? After all, once it completes, there are only five days until the gates open and then you can't farm Scarab Lords anymore. And yes, you are right, but the numbers. Peace Bloom is pretty damn easy to come by, so you know those bids are going to get absolutely fucking crazy. crazy. Whoa. Oh my god. Oh my god. Uh, and if it's one thing gamers like seeing, it's big fucking numbers. And when else am I going to get the chance to see someone buy a mage blade with flowers? I have no choice but to go. However, don't get the wrong idea. I'm not going to be bidding on any items myself. Corehound tooth? Perdition's blade? Uh, no thanks. I'm good with my incredibly suboptimal double gut gore ripper. Yes, I have distracting dagger in the bank, and no, I'm not going to use it, because even with this handicap, I'm literally a worldwide all-star, and you're all fucking cringe. But wait, then why are you farming Peace Bloom for the Peace Bloom DKP? if you're not going to bid on items with your Peace Bloom and the Peace Bloom DKP. Come on, guys, you know the answer to that. Chaos. After this Molten Core, I'm going to run through the logs and check to see who are the absolute worst players. And then I'm going to give them all my fucking Peace Bloom. I think the true spirit of the war effort is to give everything you have for a greater cause. And what could be a greater cause than gearing up some guy who's going to quit before Nax Ramus? Now that's content. Welcome to Molten Core. Hope you like the uh, entrance, by the way. <laughs> now, as explained last episode, a GDKP is a raid wherein the loot is bid on with gold at the end, and then everyone receives an even split of that gold. With these base rules in mind, and knowing that the objective of this raid is to get as much Peace Bloom as possible for the war effort, one can reasonably I'm assume that there is going to be no Peace Bloom cut still. at the end of this raid, since it's all going to be handed in. However, there was one more slight quirk <laughs> to this GDKP that, in hindsight, I can't help but feel should have been on the advertisement. Instead, this quirk was nestled yeah, deep inside a Discord space. channel that most people had only just now started gaining access to. Now, because of the events you're about to see, I no longer have access to the Discord, so you're gonna have to put up with my MS Paint recreation. Within this room, in this Discord, was a list of every piece of Molten Core gear. Each piece of gear had a number assigned to it, and that number indicated the flat price. Like a base price for bidding, right? <laughs> If you wanted gear from this GDKP, you would first pay that flat price, and then you would, wait for it, slash roll on the gear along with everyone else who wants to buy a roll? Does this sound like a GDKP to you? No? What the hell is this? Why would they call it a GDKP if you can't even bid on gear? This actually is just a free roll pug with extra steps, and there's a reason free roll pugs don't exist anymore, and that's because they are shit. But there you have it. I had joined the world's first GDKP with no bidding allowed. It was clear many people were expecting this GDKP to be run, for use of a better word, properly. Am I reading this uh, item sheet correctly? There's no bidding? Wait. <laughs> I thought this was a DKP. So someone was going to have to speak to the manager. Once we had zoned into the instance and we were all inside the same voice chat, I, like that I decided that someone was going to have to be me. If this is to like get like the lot. maximum amount of peace bloom as possible for the war effort, how come we're not bidding? Surely it would make more sense to let people just bid? Because that's what like a DKP is. My argument? Irrefutable. My social capital? Extensive. My intellect? Unmatched. The facts and logic were aligned for a perfect KO. But the response I, I got I thought we were talking about Beatles. Where are we going? This is sidetracking. Or it might not. I think we all know how this one ends. If there are peace, peace bloom in the end, you can still turn that in. Yeah, you're not planning on turning that. That guy sounds anyway. like a gamer, uh, no, dude. It wasn't. I don't think most people here were planning on doing that. I think most people were here to buy gear with Peace Bloom and then just auction house what they didn't use. I think expecting fresh level 60 casuals to care about your war okay. effort above their All own gold the income is fucking insane. Especially when, let's just keep it real, most of these players are not going to clear AQ40. In fact, I think it's a safe bet to say that 50% of these players will probably never even walk into the instance portal. But as for me, my Peace Bloom, I would rather just delete it. And that's what I told them. Yeah, you're not planning on turning it in anyway? Delete that huh? shit, fuck the horse. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I would, I would sooner delete it than not fuck get anything in return. Fuck you, man. 
can sell it, you can pick up the tree. You play Alliance, you fucking you're lucky, you can't pick you. With the Game Awards in full effect, it seemed I had upset the host with my humble suggestion to run this DKP properly. And the host had evidently not caught on yet to the fact that a lot of people in this raid were feeling pretty pissed off and misled. I recognized some of these names in the raid. I had seen them on my farming alt. They had spent days picking Peace Bloom alongside me. Or against me, I guess. So I knew they definitely had at least as much as me. Naturally, they didn't want to let their farming be for nothing, and so they started bargaining. What if you pay double? Can you get an additional roll? That's a good idea. And that was a good idea. <laughs> if people could pay double their roll fee each time they wanted to re-roll, things would at least be more interesting. It still wouldn't be a DKP, but at least it wouldn't be whatever this is. And it wouldn't fuck over the poor noobs who have spent seven days picking flowers. For God's sake, won't someone think of the noobs? With too many people asking too many questions, Heavy Hoof was out of options. He was about to explain why there was no bidding, why any idea that involved acquiring more Peace Bloom would be thrown out immediately. And that reason was... I didn't really want to deal with the logistics of having to deal with bits that go up to the 10th. That guy sounds like a gamer, dude. <laughs> Six smoking like... <laughs> Isn't that like the point? Was I wrong? I don't think so. But I do see where Heavy Hoof was coming from. I wouldn't want to deal with the logistics of trading several thousand Peace Bloom either. But that's why I'm not running a fucking Peace Bloom DKP. Am I, am I making sense here? Or? I don't host Super Bowl parties either. Wanna know why? Cause I don't like football. Also, I don't own a fucking TV. So don't you think it would be a bit shit of me to then host one anyway? And then when people show up to my Super Bowl party and start asking where the game is, I turn around and say, Super Bowl party? This is a superb owl party. You read my invitation wrong. And then when no one buys that, I come clean and say, okay guys, I know there's no TV, but think about this from my perspective, okay? I don't want to deal with the logistics of having to get a television. Come on, man. Yeah, but surely you can agree that it's- Yo, Pi, I'm not gonna lie. You have the same laugh as Barney. You know how when you like watch someone or hang out with them a lot, you adapt their laugh? You have his laugh. You guys laugh the same, Pi. Say this is a DKP when you're missing the entire point of a DKP, right? Yeah, I don't want to discuss this for you. I'll just... No, the point was to get people to fucking farm Peace Bloom yeah. and, and then turn it in. So Cute if you want to go fight. turn it in, go turn it in. We're going to raid MC and then have fun. So if you don't like it, get the fuck out. <laughs> Whoa, you good? No, we're Everybody good, dude. Like, you're just making this shit take longer. So Round we're gonna go two, ahead and do it. Right. Okay, but one more question. Do you guys think Heavy Hoof is acting sus? If you don't like it, feel free to leave. If I leave, will you answer the question? It's a stupid fucking question. <laughs> I don't think so. Perfect. Well, we did. We all do. All right, let's pull. These vibes were fucking rancid. So terrible, in fact, that given the choice between experiencing my first change of scenery you just two wipe weeks them. and two weeks and five leave. I pick the bugs. Get me the fuck out of here. You lame. I would have troll pulled and left, dude. That would have been way better. Oh, Barney, how was the Peace Bloom GDKP, dude? Not good, you guys. Not good. The Peace Bloom DKP had been a resounding disappointment. In an alternate timeline, it was probably a really fun raid with sick loot. Alas, we are here in the timeline where the people who stayed lament to me in real time how shit the raid is. I would be lying to you if I told you that the entire situation had low-key pissed me off because my ire was far from low-key. Two weeks of farming bugs had left my mental on its last thread and this molten core experience had just burned it to ash. I was about to go from Barney Beekeeper to Barney Gatekeeper. That sounds more like me. This is what I like to do, chat. I like that. In October of 2019, you asked me how I make my gold and I gave you my honest answer. And you all laughed at me. Funny little salesman selling his funny little lucky charms, how cute but also stupid. Role players are so fucking stupid, aren't they? Sean. Imagine some random dipshit just comes up to you and wants to trade you a white item that does nothing. And then you tell him <laughs> I don't want it. And he's like, no, you do want it. And he just keeps fucking insisting. Yeah, I, I can only imagine how annoying that would be. No way he made that with that, dude. 
People send them gold, probably. No way he sold this that white item. This is the beekeeper item. fortune. Depending on who you ask, this is either blood money acquired through the peddling of useless items or the life savings <laughs> of an idiot commodifying forces above his understanding. I personally think my overexposure to dragons is to blame because more and more I find myself compulsed to hoard gold. With each month, I seem to double my charm output with no end in sight. But I digress. That Up until now, I have remained Barney, a passive actually. player in the war effort, but no more. I was going to use every single piece of gold I had to delay that gate from opening for as long as I possibly could. Starting, of course, with the Peace Bloom Market, which I swiftly bought no. out in its entirety. Gaze in awe as I deal with the logistics of trading several the thousand Peace Bloom insane. to my bank vault. Mm, delicious vendor trash. Yes, I could post this all back on the auction house for an easy profit, but I don't want anyone handing in anything. This isn't money to turn into more money. This, this is money to burn. And so no I went way, down the war dude. effort list, draining each each and every resource from the auction house until it was drier oh than my, my bones. God. Something you should know about me by now is I don't really half ass anything. Which is why I then took a flight path straight to Gadget Sand I like to this clean video. up the natural auction house this. as well. As I pulled up alongside a gnome mage and made my search for linen bandages, the current hot item, I found a bunch of listings for one copper each. Well, that's good timing. As I started to buy them, I what found that idiot. someone else was buying them at the same time as me, so I instead started from the bottom and worked my way up. It was at this point that I got a whisper. Those are for the Alliance, dude. <laughs> Stop buying them. Hmm. <laughs> Was the gnome next to me buying these auctions from a horde player? Hmm, 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 hmm. Sounds like collusion to me. I'd have to double my purchasing speeds lest our pure roleplay server fall victim to yet more game breaking Why does the side go, dude? Question mark? I responded. The linen cloths you just bought for one copper a stack are for the Alliance <laughs> war effort. Okay, cool. <laughs> they can buy them from me for a higher price then. This of course was a lie. I obviously wasn't planning on reselling anything, but I said this because I knew it would piss him off. Fuck you. I tried to respond, but they put me on ignore. They then went and cried about it on the Grobulus Discord, stating, Shout out to Barney B from Final Boss <laughs> for buying the bandages <laughs> and raising the price on them. <sighs> 100. To which Roxy, whom we might meet later, said, Love at Barney B. And tagged me. UJ, world buff fanatic, king of the colluders, and rat royalty, then responds, Yeah, don't blind sell any items. I can hook you up with some contacts. The colluding warlock then says, I was coordinating it. Oh, when you guys do it, it's cool. He's an idiot. Or who would do that? When I... No, this the, is the, the ally I was selling them to was right there buying them as I posted. Barn EB just bought faster. And by faster I did. I cleaned out the neutral auction house of every single war effort material, but somehow I still wasn't sated. There was only one thing left to do. As I started on my flight to Thunder Bluff to camp the Horde auction house, I alt tabbed to my guild discord. At everyone. From now until the conclusion of the war effort, I will be reimbursing all war effort material purchases with 5% interest. Please screenshot your TSM ledger purchase history and proof that you vended or deleted the items to receive payment. Ideally, I'd like people stationed at both neutral and horde auction houses 24-7, so if you have as much time as I have money to burn, please do your part for our most noble goal and stop this war effort! However, word travels fast. Faster than a wind rider, it seems, because when I showed up to Thunderbluff to do my thing, I was swiftly assassinated by two rogues. It was clear I personally was not safe to show my face near any auction houses ever again, but that mattered not. I already had my little busy bees out doing the beekeeper's bidding so I could get back to Silithus to farm bugs. bugs. Does he get it? And then my computer crashed because my hard drive had failed. The hard drive containing every single piece of footage I recorded for this event thus far. Now inaccessible. Corrupted. All gone. My roommate and I troubleshooted cry, for hours on end as we tried That's to so get the data off the hard drive, but nothing worked. We were left with just one option, which was to That's send so the hard sad. drive off Dude, the data, an editor, recovery, which costs thousands of dollars and That's might not so even sad. yield any results. But I didn't have thousands of dollars to spend on data recovery anyway, so I was fucked. This was a one-hit kill to my morale. It had all been for nothing, and I wasn't just done with Scarab Lord. I was done with World of Warcraft. I picked up my phone and opened Discord to let my GM know I was quitting, but he had already messaged me first, a link to the Scarab Lord list. It had been updated. 
my selfless dedication to the cause had not gone unnoticed. And given that final boss runs on a merit-based system, the Scarab Lord target list had undergone some renovations. I was now no longer number 18 <sighs> on the list. I had been bumped up quite a few places. Oh, to number 11. Holy shit, this might actually be doable. I glanced down at my computer, inside of which lay a rotting, inaccessible hard drive. I may have lost everything that came before, but I can still show you how this finishes. I plugged in a three terabyte external hard drive and re-downloaded World of Warcraft, because now, I, feel bad I made a him. promise. But he's getting it. Oh, this, he doesn't finish? What the front door, dude? I'm not so upset with the ending, dude. What the hell? This is literally... Chat, the last episode he posted... I like the video, of course. The last video he posted was him saying, Am I gonna get scared of Lord? And we watched a 44-minute video. He doesn't even show... What? 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 Why did you show us this, like, Nax farming? He's blue-balling us, man. Now we have to wait one year for that? What's up, Tim? He's a he's Pine's friend, so if he's Pine's friend, he's my friend. That was a good video. I liked it. Um, I wish he showed us though, the last part. Dude, what is this? Pine, I'm not satisfied with that. Watch the forty-four. I watched that because I was thinking he's gonna get scared of Lord, but. Oh my god. <laughs> Alright, I guess we have to wait. The next video is gonna come out next year. It's gonna be a 50 minute video and it's gonna show us him getting scared of Lord. Maybe. What if it doesn't again, dude? That was fun though. Round of applause to Barney.